The Lamar Tigers are on the field for their first week of football practice. For the first time in a while, the Tigers are not the defending Class 2 state champions heading into the fall. Lamar finished last season with a 12-2 overall record, falling to Lathrop in the state semifinals. Now that loss snapped the Tigers' seven-year streak of ending the year on top of Missouri Class 2. Now they get a little bit of a fresh start now, entering the year without the pressure of keeping the streak alive. Now don't get me wrong, though. Last year still stings, and they're working hard right now to end up where they want to in November. I've been mad since December, and everybody around here knows it. And it's, you know, most of them say I'm a sore loser, and that's true. I don't like to lose. But the reason that I'm mad is I think we underperformed as coaches, and it bothers me that there's a gap between the level that we were playing at and the level, the level that we were capable of playing at. And as coaches, we could never get the scheme or the motivation or whatever it was that we were needing to close that gap consistently. And that's probably why I've been not in a very good mood since December, and I'm glad to be back out here with these guys because I want a chance to change it. Lamar Tigers find themselves in, un in an unfamiliar place in 2019 after winning seven consecutive state championships in Class 2. The Tigers aren't defending champions, but they're ready to climb the Class 2 mountain once again. The Tigers will have a lot of youth at linebacker and in the secondary, but they return their entire starting defensive line from last season on offense. The Tigers will have two key skills players returning in Case Tucker and Dante Stahl, who have seen time in the backfield and at the quarterback position. And even though the Tigers will have a lot of young players playing up this season, head coach Scott Bailey has already told his D linemen that they will need to step up even more in 2019. Probably the biggest advantage that our young linebackers have, uh, even a couple of our young secondary players, is when we were able to get games under control a year ago, uh, they were able to get into some of those varsity games and they were getting coached up by them older guys as the season went along. I think that'll help the learn, help them with their learning curve. But we're, we're returning all four of our defensive line starters and this season going forward, we're gonna try and contain the run and get take good control of the run and pass early. And uh, our goal is just to come off fire in our D-line to help the rest of our defense School football in the four states is officially a week away, and tonight Webb City was host to Joplin, Seneca, and Lamar. Seneca, they're going to get the party started here tonight. Lance Stevens connects with Trey Wilson on a short pass here. He's going to go up the sideline there and then check out Wilson, the hit stick there at the end zone. He'll score there. Touchdown for the Indians. Webb City, though, their offense, they're going to take over on the field against Lamar. How about this? A handoff to Devron Weathers. We know this man's got speed. He's got skill. Cardinals O-line making a wide gap there. And Weathers, how about this one? Lays the boom there. He gets in for another touchdown. Tigers, though, they were looking on to get to the board here as Austin Wilkerson goes right up the middle behind a big block there. And he's going to score that one. Then it was Joplin's turn. How about Blake Tash? He's going to throw this one out to the side. That South Dakota State commit there, Isaiah Davis. Davis, he's going to walk this one in easily. It's an eagle touchdown. It was a lot of good touchdown runs to cap off the night as well. Monette, they Every Monday during the high school football season, we check out the best plays from Friday night. We call them the top five plays of the week. We start at number five, Lamar opening its season at home against Logan Rogersville. The Wildcats ahead early, but big response from Lamar. J.D. Bishop finds a hole, and he's off to the races. Long touchdown run ties the game. Lamar pulled away in the second half to beat Logan Rogersville 38-19. At number four, East Newton hosting Hollister. Check out this catch and pitch. Wyatt Moore to Jackson Shriver, and Shriver goes 45 yards for a score. Heads up play there, but East Newton falls on opening night. We go to number three, Joplin taking on Willard at Junk Field and their new turf. Zach Westmoreland on the punt return, already liking that new surface. Sidesteps defenders and scampers in for a touchdown. Joplin all over Willard on Friday night, 36 to 13. Our number two play, Carthage on the road at Nixa. Senior running back Tyler Mueller had himself a night. He has a wide open lane and breaks free. 61 yard touchdown run. Carthage dominates Nixa on opening night, 35 to nothing. And the top play this week comes from Monette. Take it on Mount Burton. The Mountaineers looking to complete a comeback. Bailey goes in motion. Empty backfield. Jones gets the snap. Looking back to the left. Pass in the end zone. Caught for the two-point conversion by Miller. And Mount Vernon wins the ball game 22-21.
Mike McClure on the call. One opening night game. Mount Vernon gets the two-point conversion to beat Monette. Great opening week in Missouri. And those are your top five plays this week. Switching gears now to the Big 8 Conference. Lamar at home against Aurora. The Hound Dogs looking to score in their first possession. Quarterback Jay Lee looking to throw. Rolls to his left. Fires a pass. But Lamar's trace will be. Files flies in for the interception. Rather, Tigers will take over. A few plays later, quarterback Dante Stahl, he's going to hand the ball off to his ride receiver, J.D. Bishop. He takes off for the end zone. 30 yards for him. The extra point was no good, but doesn't really matter. Lamar up 6-0. Next possession for Lamar. First and goal. Quarterback Cody O'Sullivan, he's going to hand off to his running back, Jonathan Contreras. Contreras zigzagging his way in for six. Lamar takes a 14-0 lead. Four from the Tigers' offense now. This time, Stahl's going to fake a handoff and drops back to pass. Has a wide-open Cade Griffith. He catches the ball with ease. Another Tiger touchdown. Lamar was up 21-0. The Tigers going to go on to earn the, earn the victory, 48-21. Our Week 4 Hidden Gem of the Week takes us out to Monette, where the Cubs will face Lamar in a Big 8 West contest. KSN's Kevin Ryans has the story. If you look at the record, Monette football sits at 1-2 and two through 3 weeks. On the gridiron, though, the story is different. And if a couple of breaks go the Cubs' way, they can easily be 3-0. and oh. But the poor fortunes haven't dampened the team's confidence. Our kids see that you know we've improved from last year, and um, you know they're excited just to keep playing and, and just get better each week. Our chemistry is just it's it's working so well. We use each other's energy, and it's definitely going to be carrying on. Monette's already played tough teams, and this week could be their toughest yet. 3-0 Lamar is on the docket Friday night, and the Tigers have been a thorn on the Cubs' side, winning the last nine head-to-head -head matchups. It's just one of those things, is, you know, it's a fuel for us right now. It would mean so much. It would change the mentality, the confidence, especially would boost out of the ceiling. We haven't had a team since 2016 that had a chance against them, and I feel like this year is the year that we do have a chance. Get a better stiff arm. Got a minute? Lamar coach Scott Bailey agrees, and he knows the Tigers are going to have to play their best game on Friday night. Our kids are realizing that, that you know, people want that shot of Lamar, so hopefully we can get our run game going and, and play some defense and, and then get into the flow of a game and hopefully get the flow of the game going our way. The game may come down to who is the most physical up front as both teams use the run game heavily, and that excites both squads headed into Friday. Bodies hitting bodies, that's that's like where the energy and the excitement comes from. They've been a really fun team to play against. I'm just prepared to play the best game, you know, of my high school career. we got to use our physicality up on the front line, especially with our big boys, and definitely excited. It's It's been two weeks since we had a home game. The crowd's amazing. I'm sure it's going to be a great turnout. With your hidden gem of the week, Kevin Ryans for your local sports. We're heading to Burl Fowler Stadium in Monette. The Cubs taking on Lamar. We'll start in the first quarter. Monette with a pitch out to Alex Salas. But the ball is going to be stripped loose. And Lamar will recover the football. And that's going to help lead to this play right here. The snap to Case Tucker. The handoff and another handoff to Wyatt Hall. He runs to the outside and will hit Pater. Touchdown Lamar. Tigers lead 7-0. The Cubs will respond though. Second quarter. Carter Brink with a short pass out to Ethan Unfleet. And he's not going to be denied a trip to the end zone. Check this out. Pushes his way in Ooh. and helps tie this game up at 7. Lamar needing an answer. And the handoff in the back field and the ball is going to be lost in the scrum take it out check it out here lost in that scrum and Monette says they have the ball and they do but they're only going to be able to turn it into three points but the Cubs still leading 10-7 the Tigers picking up some big plays of their own Tucker dropping back to pass and airing it out downfield to Hull to put them to within striking distance but they would also be held to a field goal attempt but theirs would be no good and for the first time in 10 tries L Monette is going to defeat Lamar 28 to 7. Wow, what? Class 2 number 9, Lamar hosting the McDonald County Mustangs in Big 8 conference play. We've got a first and goal for the Tigers. Quarterback Dante Stahl takes a snap, spins and hands it off to running back Jonathan Contreras. He's down at the two-yard line. Very next play, Stahl on the QB keeper, going to find the end zone for a touchdown. After the missed PAT, the Tigers would lead 6-0. Next possession for Lamar. Stahl on another quarterback keeper. He'll barrel his way down all the way to the one-yard line. 
second and goal for Lamar now. The snap going to go to Case Tucker, and he's going to run it in for another Tiger touchdown. Lamar converts on the two-point try. They would take a 14-0 lead. McDonald County finally going to find the end zone. Quarterback Cole Martin hands off to wide receiver Trent Alec. Alec on the sweep to the right and into the end zone, but Lamar is going to win this one big. 49 to 28. This high school football season is flying by as we enter week eight. But before we do that, let's take a moment to look back at the top performers from week seven. With it being October, it's spooky season, and this Web City defense has been nothing but scary. At number five, the Cardinals D has been lights out all season long. They limited Republic to six points in the first quarter alone and 88 yards of total offense. Not to mention, they've only allowed just 75 points this season. It seems like Joplin running back Isaiah Davis continues to find himself in the mix of top performers week in and week out. Look at him run. It's like poetry in motion. He's automatic for the people. Davis went for nine carries for 143 yards and three touchdowns. He just doesn't stop finding the end zone. Over to number three, another good Eagles team with Pierce City's quarterback, Colton O'Hara. The Eagles are undefeated and have only given up 14 points to their opponents. O'Hara had the offense rolling in a 43-0 shutout win over St. Michael's. Behind is 111 rushing yards and 113 passing yards for three rushing TDs. Why not make a case for Lamar's Case Tucker at the number two spot? Tucker took off with 22 carries for 233 yards and four touchdowns in the Tigers' 49-28 victory over McDonald County. He also came up big after a few scoring plays, finding the end zone twice for two successful two-point conversions. It's Patrick Carlton highlight real time. Carthage's QB1 has been sensational once again this season, getting it done both on the ground and through the air. Carlton threw for 145 yards, collected 139 rushing yards for a total of five touchdowns and a Tigers 35-14 win over Willard. Carlton is this week's top performer. We're headed to Logan Field for the Silver Tiger game between Nevada and Lamar. And Lamar is going to strike first in this one. The Tigers offense faking out Nevada and our camera. But it'll be Cade Griffith who strides in for six. It's seven nothing Lamar. More from Lamar now. Case Tucker going to keep the ball himself. And he finds a wide gap to run through. Touchdown Tigers. It's now 14 nothing. Nevada looking for some offense. Dylan Beachler's pass is going to be picked off by the freshman Austin Wilkerson and he's going to run it deep into their own territory but a holding penalty is going to set Lamar back to the spot of the foul but the good news for the Tigers they get to keep the ball and they'll go right back to the ground once again this time it'll be JD Bishop making his way into the end zone it's now 21 nothing in favor of Lamar and Oscar will be heading back to Lamar tonight the Tigers blank Nevada 42 to nothing. The game of the week this week holds a lot of weight in the Big 8 West as Lamar hosts Cassville. If the Wildcats win, they claim their second consecutive Big 8 West title. Jake Stansel has more in our Game of the Week preview. We got outplayed in that game a year ago, especially in the second half, and one another shot at these guys, maybe play a better game against them, show them something better than what we did last year. We're on to week nine, the grand finale of the regular season of high school football in Missouri. The stakes are high between Lamar and Cassville. For the Wildcats, it's simply a chance to clinch the Big A West. The Tigers, an opportunity to claim home turf. If we win this game, we have all three district games at home. So it's going to be really physical and just uh, trying our best for both teams the whole night. Lamar hasn't forgotten about that loss a year ago. And the Tigers are much improved from their loss to Monette in week four. As for Cassville, a win against the Tigers would give them even more confidence heading into the postseason. We would definitely like to go into the playoffs with another win, a big win, and hopefully electrify us into possibly winning a district championship and go further. Well, it's always funny to play against a team like Lamar just because the history in the past. And, um, yeah, I just love playing against Lamar. This is the type of game that you circle on the calendar from the beginning of the year maybe even further back than that. But one thing's for certain, there's a lot of weight and meaning behind it. I told our players all week, I love games like this. You know, to have the opportunity to be playing in a meaningful ball game in week nine, that's what you work all off season, you know, all spring, all summer um, for, is to have the opportunity to play in games like this. For your game of the week, I'm Jake Stansel, Action 12 Sports.
Our Tigers capped off the regular season with a big win last week, topping ninth-ranked Cassville 14-10. With that win, the Tigers finished the regular season with a 7-2 overall record, which is good for the number two seed in the Class 2 District 4 bracket. Tonight, Lamar opens up their postseason run at home against the seventh-seeded California Pintos. First quarter, Lamar in the red zone. Dante Stahl with the keeper. Up the middle for the first score of the game. Lamar up seven. Later in the first, J.D. Bishop takes the handoff, gets outside, tiptoes down the sideline, carrying defenders with him. Gets in the end zone. Tigers up by 14. Ensuing kickoff, though, California would strike back. Drake Schlupp on the return. Finds his way through some traffic. Takes it all the way about 90 yards to the house. California on the board. They trail just 14 to 6. But we'll go to the second quarter now. Dante Stahl breaks some tackles on his way into the end zone. Lamar goes on to win this one big 49 to 14. The Tigers move on to the district semifinals next week. In Lamar now where the Tigers took on the Warsaw Wildcats. Lamar would get the coin toss and they chose to receive no rollout with this run by Case Tucker, putting them all the way down to the one yard line. Very next play though, he's going to find a hole and delivers. Lamar will take a 6-0 lead. Next Tiger possession, J.D. Bishop will give the Warsaw defense a run for their money with this counter play. He just slips by and gets another touchdown for the Tigers. Another six points for Lamar. Second quarter now, Warsaw quarterback Matthew Cousins to Clayton Simmons, who's just not going to be able to be stopped by the Tigers defense. He's going to get in there and get into the end zone to put Warsaw on the board 14-6. Lamar wins 50-6, though, for career win 150 for head coach Scott Bailey. Back the Lamar Tigers play in the Class 2 District 4 semifinals tonight, hosting the Warsaw Wildcats. Lamar had no problem in their playoff opener last week, rolling by California 49-14. The Tigers tried to stay rolling tonight and clinch a spot in the district championship game in the first. Case Tucker, he's going to keep it for the two-yard score. Two-point conversion no good makes it 6-0 Tigers. Later in the first, Dante Stahl gives it to DJ Bishop on the reverse. He's going to take it down the left sideline, turning on the Jets for the score. Two-point conversion good this time. Lamar leads it 14-0. Second quarter now, Warsaw deep in Tiger territory. Pass to Clayton Simmons. He's going to run it through a few defenders for the score. Lamar still leading, though, 14-6. Midway through the second, Lamar in scoring position. Reverse to DJ Bishop. He's going to push with the defense. Find the end zone for the score. Makes it 22-6, Tigers. It'll be all Lamar in the second half. They win 50 to 6. Ooh. On the other 19 Ozark area high school football team stepped onto the gridiron tonight, fighting to keep their state championship hopes alive. It's district championship night. Color Ted's Matt Vereen was in Fair Grove, where the Eagles were hoping to soar into sectionals. Dan, Fairgrove here has been waiting for this night a long time. After four straight years of traveling to district championships, finally, the undefeated Eagles got to host one right here in their own backyard. But waiting on the other side was the Lamar Tigers team. They are all too familiar with meeting in these championship games. Fairgrove hoping to start a new trend tonight. They've lost four straight district title games. Two of those shut off defeats against these Lamar Tigers. And those Tigers set the tone on drive number one. Kate Griffith takes this handoff 25 yards. Lamar would turn that into a touchdown and a 7-0 lead. But two and three years ago, Lamar shut out Fairgrove. Not tonight. Third down, David Oplotnik scrambling and launching toward Dominique Hoskins, who hauls it in at the four-yard line. Eagles would punch that in to tie the game at seven. Next two drives in and punts, but Lamar on drive number three goes reverse to J.D. Bishop, loses the tackler, hits the corner, and he is gone. 47 yards to the house, Lamar. Back in front, 14-7. Fairgrove trying to respond. Fourth and four from the Lamar 30. Aquatic again finding a receiver. This time it's Cole Gilpin. With a fourth down touchdown from 30 yards. Extra point block, though. It's 14-13 at halftime. Fairgrove keeps momentum into the third. Second half opening drive. Aquatic hits Hoskins again, this time for six. Eagles up for the first time, 19-14. Then they force a punt, but momentum shifts suddenly. A muffed return sets up Lamar to retake the lead 22 to 19. And on the following drive, Oplotnik for the Eagles trying to make something happen. But instead, he is picked off by Austin Wilkerson. Tigers with all the momentum. They turn to Bishop, who punches it in as Lamar survives fair growth 
and takes home the district title. It's really special. Huh? You know, in years past, I didn't really think too much about it, but coming this year, being a senior, knowing that this could be my last night of playing football, it meant everything. They love each other, and they love their coaches. But they have they have things that they do and, and, and sports that they play that they love. They play football because they love their teammates. So, Dan, unlike two and three years ago, this game was by no means a shutout runaway victory. But even with the change of venue, the result stays the same as the Lamar Tigers win the district title and advance to sectionals. From Fairgrove, I'm Matt Vereen. Ozarks first. Our Tigers are playing in the state quarterfinals this afternoon. The Tigers are at home hosting the undefeated Ava Bears for a spot in the final four. This is the third straight season the Tigers and Bears have met in the playoffs. Lamar aims to make it three in a row against Ava. Tigers down six early. Dante Stahl caps off a 51 yard drive with a one yard rushing score. Tigers get the two point conversion to lead eight to six. Later in the first, Nate Swafford drops back, goes over the middle to a wide open Zach Mendel for a 54 yard score. Bears leading it 12 to 8 after the first. More from Ava in the second quarter. Caden Myers, he's going to fight his way in from three yards out. The Tigers down double digits at the break. Bears keep it going in the second half. Swafford on the keeper, finds a hole. He's going to take off. That's going to be 45 yards to the house. Ava up 26 to 8 at that point. Tigers trying to stay in it. Case Tucker, he's going to dive into the end zone from about five yards out. Lamar trailing by 12. That would be the final score of the game. Lamar's season ends falling to Ava 26 to 14. After that opening drive where, where we looked really good, it was just real inconsistent as to what we were trying to get done. And, Defense did their job in the second half. I felt like it did really well as far as as far as far getting us the ball back when we needed it. We just could not get our offense going. The Castle That's an outstanding job today. Congratulations. You guys earned it. Let's play coach. Come here, son. Anybody that moves from receiver to O-line, that guy has a ton of respect for me. You're Thank doing you, what your team needs you to do. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. You too, buddy. Congratulations. Stay healthy. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Pennywise Bro Him. That's a song that uh, you know that I grew up on, and I, I shared that song with the kids. And uh, anytime it comes on, if I put it on, it kind of gives you the goosebumps, and you know, hey, you know, it's ready, you know, ready for football. So that's a song that I, I grew up with. Uh, I'd probably go with Skrilla. I don't know that song, but Skrilla's probably Skrilla. Yeah. Can we, can we hear a little bit of it? No, no, <laughs> no, not, no, no, no. Country roads. Trey Strain, he's also known as Young Sauce. He's our, he was our free safety and a wide receiver for us. He's been rapping for a couple years now. We all listen to him before the game. Probably Hey Jude by the Beatles. Yeah, don't stop believing, man. Oh, Turner, I like it. I like it. Oh, um, get down on it. Toby Keith, how do you like me now? Oh man. In the weight room today, it was Thunderstruck when it hit, so we'll go Thunderstruck. Probably depends on the style of music, too, if you're looking. I have to say, uh, Railway Elf by Billy Idol. Uh, in the air tonight. Bill <laughs> Collins love it. There you go. Great choice. Old Country, it'd be The Ride by David Allen Coe. TNT by ACDC. I'll go with Red Dirt Road. I'll just go Sweet Home Alabama. Uh, I'm not a big rap guy, I like to listen to country. I'd probably have to go with God's country. <laughs> For me, it's uh, Stairway to Heaven. One song, Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer. Uh, in high school, uh, my freshman year, I won a state championship, and that was the main uh, song in the highlight video, so I listened for, to it before every game in high school, and 
I still listen to it for every game I coach, and our kids get tired of it and make them listen to it in the weight or in the locker room for games. So, so uh, you can blame Coach Rogers for that one. Kickstart my heart's one of my all-time favorites. That guy goes back to the '80s and the heavy metal music that I used to listen to a lot. <laughs> I'd say "Burn It to the Ground" by Nickelback. A bunch of guys like they uh, before the games and stuff. We've been playing "Hot" by Young Thug. <laughs> I'll probably cut the cord. I shine down. That's what gets our weight room going. Night Moves by Bob Seeger. I know. Great choice. <laughs> I appreciate it, Coach. <laughs>